Hello folks, in this video we're going to talk about oscillators. Yay! Right, circuits that produce waveforms for us. Could be a sine wave, could be another shape, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna focus initially here on oscillators. And uh, one of the key elements that we have to understand is something called the Barkhausen st Stability Criterion named after Heinrich Barkhausen. All right. So, for in, or in order for a circuit to feed back, there's two things we have to consider. First one, is that the loop gain, because this is going to use feedback, right? As a matter of fact, this is going to use positive feedback. Be really specific about it versus negative feedback. So there is a path back, right? The idea of a loop. The loop gain must be greater than one to start oscillation. Now, it must then fall back to one to maintain oscillation. So usually this implies we need some kind of um, gain control element in there somewhere. All right. Second thing, all right, that's number one. Second thing, loop phase must be an integer multiple of 360 degrees. That's what makes it positive feedback, right? Negative feedback, you might recall, makes things more stable. Positive feedback makes things unstable, it makes them oscillate. A good example of positive feedback is the feedback you get if you go to a concert or uh, a lecture or something and, and the public address system, the sound reinforcement system feeds back, you hear that squeal. The system is actually going into um, a uh, sort of a resonant mode where one frequency is being reproduced <clears throat> without any kind of input. All right, so basically we have, as a block diagram, we have something like this. We have a, an amplifier, right, some kind of amplifying block A, and then there is a feedback block, beta, Like so. So the input to this thing really is DC. Okay, to the system is DC. And this, this would be our out over here, output. Okay, so we just say that A times beta, the loop gain, um, has to be one to maintain the oscillation. Okay. That's really what we're saying up here. Okay. Right. Now. We want to select out one frequency. So it, this implies my um, loop has to have something to select out one frequency, right? You have to select out one frequency. Now, how do we do that? Because, you know, when you start this thing up, when you power it up, there's just noise in the system. And noise, of course, is spectrally broad. We want to pick one frequency out of this sort of noise spectrum, this broadband spectrum of all these different frequencies. I want to pick out one. So how do we do that? All right. Well, there's two ways of thinking about it. You could do it either by gain. In other words, one of them specifically is going to meet this gain requirement the best, or you can do it via phase, right? You can do it this way. One of them is going to work out to have the proper phase. I mean, both of those must be true, but you design circuits to do this. So, some options. You could set up a bunch of uh, lead networks, right? You could have uh, cascaded lead networks. 
So you have something that looks like um, you know, like this. Caps would work better than inductors. All right, so the signal's going through like this. So it would be, you know, sort of flipped over here, right? You'd be going in this way. Um, if you had an amplifier over here that was uh, an inverting amplifier, you'd get 180 degrees out of that, all right? So you'd need another 180 to get your N360. So, you know, one lead network is going to get you 90 max. Um, you know, trying to pull the 180 out of the two of them, that's, you know, right at the theoretical limit. So that's not practical. So we could use three of those. Right? It wouldn't necessarily be 60, 60, 60. You could, but it wouldn't necessarily have to be that. But you have enough, right? Potentially, you have a maximum here of 270. So somewhere along the line, um, you could get the 180 that you need with an inverting amplifier, 180, 180, 360, boom. As long as the amplifier has enough gain to overcome the loss that you're going to get through the lead networks at that frequency, bango, this thing is going to start oscillating. All right? So that's basically focusing on the phase end of it. Okay? Another option would be to use um, part of a Wien bridge. All right? Or Wien bridge, if you prefer. So that would be something like this. Here's your output over here. So again, signal's going in like this. What ends up happening here is uh, you'd set your uh, resistor values the same, your cap values the same, and um, at one particular frequency, right, wherever your uh, F sub C is, you'd have 45 degrees, 45 degrees. These things would, um, the system would actually give you a zero degree phase shift at that critical frequency, and there would be some loss here. At really low frequencies, that loss is huge because this cap is big. It opens up. At really high frequencies, the loss is huge because, again, this cap shorts out, right? Somewhere in the middle, but at FC, uh, that, that uh, loss is modest, okay? It's actually about one-third. So, again, if you had a gain over here that um, could overcome that, at that particular frequency, you would have both the gain part and the phase part because right? this would be zero degrees. And in that case, you would have a non-inverting amplifier, right? Non-inverting amplifier, zero zero for this at FC, so that's N360, where N is zero, all right? So that's a possibility. Another possibility uh, would be to use some kind of tuned circuit. All right, so you could use um, like an, L, uh, an LC kind of configuration, something like this. So this would be similar to what we're looking at over here. Um, if you remember your, your uh, impedance curves for tuned circuits, right, for a series resonant, you'd set these up to, to resonate at the same frequency. The F0 would be the same for the two pieces, right? Same cap, same inductor. So for the series, and if you looked at the magnitude of impedance, right, you get something that uh, dips. And for parallel, you get something that peaks. Right? You get something that goes like this. So, again, if we look at this as a voltage divider, um, you'll have maximum signal through here at the resonant frequency, because this will be a maximum Z and this will be a minimum Z. And at resonance, phase angles are zero, so you're in the same position you were up here with the with the Wien bridge. All right? Again, you would have an amplifier that uh, was non-inverting. Okay, so a not very practical version of this, but just to show you, Right, you could use something like this. So I'm just going to use some inverting amplifiers. So I could use something along this line, even something a little simpler. I could just have a resistor over here. And I'm going to need another inverting amplifier here. Here's my output. I'm going to feed this back like that. So this amplifier and this amplifier, inverting, inverting. So that's zero degrees net. At resonance, this thing 
is zero degrees. But this creates a voltage divider, this resistor and this tuned circuit, and we have you know this effect again. So all I have to do is make sure that between these two amplifiers, I have enough gain to overcome the loss, the insertion loss of that RLC network. And bingo, the thing starts to oscillate. We do need some way of controlling the gain in a practical circuit. Otherwise, your sine wave is going to end up having clipped top and bottom, which, you know, not exactly hi-fi. Um, once you do generate a sine wave, you can do other things. You can, for example, run it through a comparator to generate a square wave. You could integrate the square wave to get uh, a triangle wave. There are, you know, different sorts of manipulations you can do to get other wave shapes. But that's the basic idea. So there are some other videos that will dive down into here and look, for example, at a, uh, a Veen bridge, a um, triangle square wave generator, things like that. Okay. But this is a good start. So remember the Barkhausen criteria, right? So your loop gain has to be greater than one to start oscillation, equal to one to maintain it. And the loop phase must be an integer multiple of 360, right? Including zero, obviously. There you go.